the following video shows the TIPS technique that we are using at the Hepatic Hemodynamic Lab at Hospital Clinic in Barcelona, the evolution of our experience in more than 500 procedures. Under local anesthesia and aseptic conditions, the procedure is initiated by placing a venous introducer in the right internal jugular vein. Guidance of the puncture by ultrasound reduces the risk of inadvertent puncture of the carotid artery. Under fluoroscopic guidance, a 30 cm long sheath is introduced in the inferior vena cava. This step will be essential for the subsequent portal puncture. Performing a cardiopulmonary catheterization adds a few minutes to the process and can provide important prognostic information. The right hepatic vein is catheterized within a multipurpose catheter. A small amount of contrast dye is injected to verify the correct location and then the introducer sheath is advanced over the catheter into the hepatic vein. This allows advancing the balloon catheter to determine the hepatic venous pressure gradient. Adequate occlusion of the hepatic vein is checked by the slow injection of a small amount of contrast dye with the balloon inflated. The pressure gradient is determined as the difference between the free hepatic vein pressure deflated balloon and the wedged vein pressure inflated balloon. In this patient the hepatic venous pressure gradient is of 17 mm Hg. All measurements are performed in triplicate. At our institution we perform carbon dioxide wedged hepatic venography using an automatic injector that standardizes the process and reduces risks. This is always performed to help targeting the portal vein. After portography, we proceed to deep sedation, analgesia, with intravenous propofol and remifentanil, after which the catheter and punction needle is advanced into the liver. Real-time ultrasonography is extremely helpful in guiding portal vein access allowing to check whether the catheterized hepatic vein is the most appropriate to access the portal vein to follow the direction of the needle through the hepatic parenchyma to confirm that the portal vein has been reached and to make sure that the site of accessing the portal vein is actually intrahepatic. After its successful puncture the portal vein is catheterized and portal venous pressure measurements are obtained. Because of sedation and the deep breathing of the patient, portal pressure measurements show a marked oscillation, making the interpretation of the results rather difficult. Then an angioplasty with an 8 mm diameter balloon is performed showing an indentation where the wall of the portal vein is dilated and also at the hepatic vein level. Once the tract is dilated, the introducer sheath is advanced into the portal vein to allow the subsequent release of the stent. Let's review the procedure in this animation. A puncture from the hepatic to the portal vein is performed that allows advancing a guide wire. The tract is then dilated with an angioplasty balloon connecting the two veins. We are now ready to deploy the stent. We advance the stent to the end of the introducer that is placed in the portal vein and then remove the introducer sheath, deploying the uncoated self-expanding area of the stent in the portal vein. Stent and introducer are jointly smoothly withdrawn until a small opposition to further withdrawn is felt indicating that we have reached the portal vein wall. At this point the introducer sheath is slowly and completely removed deploying now the covered area of the stent that covers the entire parenchymal tract and the hepatic vein to its ostium in the inferior vena cava. After releasing the stent, it is dilated 
using an 8mm angioplasty balloon. Let's see this part of the procedure again. First, we deploy the uncovered part of the stent. Then, all the deploying system is withdrawn until a small resistance is felt, indicating that we have reached the portal vein wall. Afterwards, the coated area is released and the stent is positioned with a new dilation of the entire track. Portal pressure is measured. Because the patient is still under deep sedation and there are important respiratory oscillations that reduce the accuracy of the measurements, this determination is only indicative. 10 to 15 minutes after stopping sedation, whilst the patient is awake and records are stable, pressure measurements are determined again, showing a portal pressure of 19 millimeters of mercury and an inferior vena cava of eight, resulting in a portocaval gradient of 11. If the gradient is greater than 12 millimeters of mercury, a new balloon angioplasty with a 10 millimeter diameter balloon is used to further dilate the stent and pressure measurements are repeated. Finally, a portography is performed showing an excellent flow through the tips.